This is from Scott from Utah. Uh, hello, Corny and Brian. I wanted to bring some clarity to the Bray Wyatt storyline. He is trying to create something called analog horror. See, we've been talking about that this none of this makes any sense, and how, how is he even pitching it to the writers or the people who put the videos together or who's coming up with it if he ain't, and what, how do they make the people that are airing it understand it, much less the viewer? And uh, Scott continues, these videos, the analog horror, do not tell stories the usual way. Well, you got that right but instead will use fake newscasts, educational videos, and other types of old media to tell the story. To get the whole story, you must put it together like a puzzle. You have to put pieces, or have to have, or I think he's, this is typed and he's uh, eliminated a word, but you have to put pieces from each segment and put them together. The problem is this kind of entertainment is the most niche thing you could make. Most people will not have the time or even want to solve the story. Most will instead ignore it. And this is assuming he even has a story. He could just be throwing spooky images on the screen. So is this, is it's analog horror? Is this, does this come from Japan also? I don't know, because I mean... It like reminds, the anime? Well, the first thing I thought about it was actually a Japanese movie, Ringu, which became The Ring here in America with Naomi Watts when I first started seeing all the Bray Wyatt stuff a while ago. But, you know, it's like anything with wrestling. I think you kind of need an, you need to figure out the end sometimes to get there. It seems <laughs> like with all the Bray Wyatt stuff, it's just, here's a bunch of stuff. It never goes anywhere. There's never a conclusion. There's never anything that makes sense. It's just kind of a sloppy excuse like oh we're doing all this this is analog horror so we just keep doing it it never goes anywhere it never makes sense and i think and you can tell me if you think i'm wrong based on the feedback we see and everything we see i don't think people are taking the bray wyatt stuff as much now as they were when they first saw it because even the stupid stuff isn't as original as it was a couple of years ago well yeah because <sighs> I mean, again, we said a lot of people love the, which again was before we started paying very close attention to the program, if at all. The you know when he was the leader of the 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 family, the swamps, the fucking lantern, the spooky people that you would see in, you know, the hills have eyes, or, you know, the fucking, uh, the typical backwoods, Texas Chainsaw Massacre house family, whatever. Okay, that's cool. I'm I'm all for that. Show me some of that. Let's see what you got. But by the time that we started watching, it, he was he was being burned alive on pay per view and had the fucking fun house with the puppets and everything. And a lot of people then were saying, "Oh, we love him, but boy, we really love this the, the you know the Wyatt family and this." And they were they were still romanticizing what he had just previously done while he was doing that shit. But now. And he's come back and he's doing this and it's even more inexplicable and the shows are moving at an even slower pace than, you know, they were a few years ago to the point where you're already kind of impatient will something fucking happen. Um, yeah, we're seeing a lot, not just our listeners, but just people in general on whatever feedback, Twitter, social media going, Jesus Christ, will he get to the fucking point? And yes, the the some of the people in the building are you know are still depending on where they are and what venue and what's going on, what he's doing. They're they're loving it, but it it's not like a raving full throated oh my god like it might have been at one point. Yeah, and I'm not against the idea because I think it's part of where we are today as a society, the interactive nature of a lot of things. I'm not against the idea of wrestling fans having to you know pause something and find clues. But if it's nonstop that and it never goes anywhere, then it's just you're doing that for no reason. I can go put up a video with random images and in the middle of it put up the word hot dog. Like it doesn't mean <laughs> anything. And that's all this stuff is. And again, beyond all the issues with what we're talking about here, you also have the issue of anyone he works with comes out of it looking worse. It's impossible to work a program with this guy. 
nothing goes anywhere. And it's going to be interesting to see how they put him back on the show when they do, assuming they will, whenever he returns, because beyond the merch, you can't tell me this run is good. Beyond whatever they're making in merch sales, this has been a disastrous run for Bray Wyatt. Well, and we don't know where he's gone here lately. Um, There was speculation, was he injured? Well, you know, nobody's seen him really do anything to get hurt. Um, You know, the creative was changed, blah, blah, blah. Maybe they're saying, you know what? (laughs) Pump the brakes here a second. People are turning down working with him. It, people, it, it seems like he's a popular person socially or, you know, behind the scenes. It's not like everybody in the locker room hates him. It just nobody wants to work with that guy on screen. So maybe they're evaluating that. And how can we use this guy's talents? He can talk. Remember the first week or two he was back? I was like, God, this guy can talk to people. But if he just anything. makes a fucking point. He doesn't say anything. He can, he you, he can hook him with his voice and his delivery when he's being a real person, not when he's being um fucking Jason Voorhees' fucking third cousin. This will go um, down as one of the best moves. Uh, seriously, one of the best moves Tony Khan made was not even trying to sign this guy, not really considering it because this would have been even worse on AEW TV. And it's clear that Bray Wyatt is someone who wants to do his own thing. You know, I was watching recently an interview with Crispin Glover about the problems he had with Back to the Future and the producer, Robert Zemeckis, and everyone else. The actor that was going to play George McFly was like, I don't like the way this is going. It's too much about materialism and commercialism, and I think my character should do this. Eventually, you don't want the guy who just wants to do his own thing. You need someone who's going to do what's right for everyone else on the team. Not to compare Crispin Glover to Bray Wyatt. I think Crispin Glover's much more talented. <laughs> But I think that's the problem you have with Bray Wyatt now. You have a guy who, in a sense, beyond being released, has been spoiled by WWE. And they've let him run wild with all of this stuff, and it's not made anything better. And again, he doesn't have anyone to work with. It's main eventers specifically. We've seen what he did to Seth Rollins and other people. Brock Lesnar said no. We know it wouldn't have worked out well for Lashley. Who do you program with this guy? Everyone's going to come out of it the same way. It's a, it's almost an impossible task to use him. And here's the, th- he did a lot of that stuff, the, the being the burned alive and et cetera under Vince McMahon. And then when Vince was gone, uh, that's why we were willing to say, okay, what is a new creative regime going to do? But let me ask you this, <laughs> because again, all I saw was them burning this fucking guy alive and the Firefly Funhouse and all that shit. But at least there wasn't, he didn't have alter egos and, and people from his family coming in and mysterious fashioning, dropping him on his head or whatever. The Vince McMahon I knew, if he was watching the videos or he was listening to the promo, his reaction would be at the end of it, what the fuck is he talking about? What point is he making? That's the same one that that Vince would, the Vince I knew would have had. So someone would have had to have told Vince, look, <laughs> here's the point eventually that he's going to make or that is going to be said or this, this is going to happen and we're just milking the people incessantly. Then it, it, he may have gone along with it then. But he would have had to have, he would have demanded to know what the fuck is this fucking guy saying? Because I've seen him do it before on much less innocuous or more innocuous, vague promos where a guy just got lost and didn't really make a point and he would, Vince would be livid. And this just meanders everywhere. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Does Bray Wyatt's comeback over the last several months remind you at all of when Vince brought back the Ultimate Warrior in 96? Whoa. Yeah, in a in a in a different, you know, in ring fashion. But right. yes, I get what you're saying. But in terms of here's a guy who was a big star and in his eyes, he understands it in a way that the promotion doesn't. Warrior came back, he wanted to do his own thing. He wanted to do comic books. That promo where he came out with a hat on to confront Jerry Lawler, didn't run to the yeah. ring, walked out with a hat on, the ultimate warrior. All of a sudden, 
what worked wasn't what was being done. It was more about what he had inside of him and the words he wanted to use and the things he wanted to do. Here you have Bray Wyatt, not a big fan of his work. Early on, it was one thing. It became another thing. You have to say, in a sense, he was successful selling merch. Fans were into him. But since he's come back, it remind. I mean, I think there's a lot of comparisons to the Warriors return in 96. Well, and also um, the nostalgia factor of, boy, everybody was over the moon about it for the first few weeks. And then it started cooling yeah. off a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, then it was like, is this, is this what's going to happen? He didn't fit anymore. And it had only been, what, at that point, uh, four years. So how long did Bray stay gone? A year and a half, two years, somewhere in that range. Maybe he should have stayed gone a little longer so we'd have missed him more. I don't know. I wouldn't have missed him. <laughs> 